Hello everyone, Becca here. Today I thought I would share the um, beginnings and ideas that I have for Roxy's Journal of Stitchery, Volume 2. Um, this is the book that I had chosen, thinking that uh, this was really just about the same size book that my first journal is just about this same size and being that this will go to both of these will go to my twin daughters I thought that it would be nice to keep them both the same size so that one doesn't feel <laughs> that one is getting more than the other um, so that was the book that I had chosen and um, these are the napkins that I decided to use. I have eight of these napkins and I thought they were so beautiful. I love this motif on them. And so I wanted to make that a feature on the pages and I love these scalloped edges. So I thought that would be so pretty. So in order to fit in that book, the this smaller book, I would have to cut the napkins down to this size. I would have, I think it's about six inches. And uh, so I cut one down and I thought I'd stitch it up the side and, um, and it would open like this. But the designs that I wanted to use on this first page didn't really fit um, on here that well. So I was thinking I'd like to leave the napkin the full width if I could and could I find a book to fit that so when the napkin is folded in half like this I would like that size for the page so actually I had this book upstairs in my sewing studio and this is a um, quilting journal actually and the size was perfect so I sacrificed the pages in there I'll put them in something else. So these napkins folded in half seem to fit in here perfectly. I'll just make sure that I'm in the frame. Yeah. So they will fit in there perfectly, so that works. Um, the only thing is this spine on this book is very small, so I may have to enlarge this spine, but I'll tackle that down the road when I'm done with everything. Um, so this is the size page that I would be working with. And because I decided that um, there will be three signatures and four pages each signature, that will be 12 pages. And that's what we're doing, two pages a month for six months. So. I thought in order to save space and not have to create another signature and extra pages, I would use this first page as my first prompt page, but also as my title page. So um, I think that'll work out nicely for me and then I can um, do all 12 pages and still have a title page. So I thought I would share the images that I found the prompt, one of the prompt, or the prompt was um, deer, a deer. And so I just loved this image. I thought it was so pretty. And it just fits really nicely on here. I may trim this just a little bit. Um, and I also loved this image as well. I thought this was very pretty. Uh, loving Christmas wishes. So, I think that'll be my first page and it'll also be my title page and so I just quickly sketched out a little idea of how I would stitch on here so I think in this space I will just stitch Rebecca's journal of stitchery and I might put a little needle and thread there but that'll go in this space here and um, to embellish this page, I thought I might couch some yarn around this little 
design motif. I thought that might be pretty to couch that on there. That color just looks so pretty. And um, so I may do that. But I also have this green velvet um, rickrack, which I think is very pretty too. So I may use that instead. I'm not sure. This looks kind of dark to me, I'm thinking. But the other side is a very pretty color. It's kind of between a green and a blue. And so I thought I may do some of that and stitch over that kind of in X's the way they do over rickrack. I thought that might be pretty. So that was an option. I mean, of course, there's lace too. Uh, I also have this color velvet rickrack as well, um, which might be pretty. This is kind of an olivey green, but has sort of a vintage feel to it. So that might be pretty on here as well. Stitched around a little frame around that. Um, that was a possibility. Right now I have no idea where, where this page will go. Uh, and here is also some other trim, sort of a lace, little green flowers that might look pretty on here, going around this motif. So that might look nice, or it might be nice to divide the page like that and have another piece going horizontally. Um, maybe something like that. I, I don't know. These are just some ideas that I had. Um, that I was thinking might look pretty. Um, because there's 12 pages this time around, um, and it's summer here in the United States, and summer is such a busy time with gardening and um, vacations and get-togethers, I was thinking I probably won't have that much stitching time. And <clears throat> also, excuse me, moving my sewing studio <laughs> downstairs which has turned out to be quite an undertaking. Um, but I, I just may not have the time to do um, very detailed embellishing stitching. I know it's a stitchery journal, but um, I just may not have the time to, to do lots and lots of embellishments. So I will see how that works out. But I will at least stitch this on here as the title page. and. So these are the images that I have chosen for the first prompt. I'm pretty sure I'm going with these, and I love the vintage look and feel of these. I just think it's really beautiful. Um, and the way that I have these napkins set up, I cut, I cut them down so they're nine inches from top to bottom. And uh, there was only a motif on one corner of the napkin. So the way I will set it up is uh, the signatures. This will be one signature. And the motif will be on one side. And then the next page will be a plain page. Oh, there's my phone. I'll have to, I'll have to get that after. Um, and then the next page will have the motif in this corner from another napkin. And then it will be a plain page. So that'll be one signature. And the other thing I was thinking as well is um, I had cut pieces of fabric to put on these pages to sew, to sew my motifs down to, to compose my page. And sew it and sew it on these other pages and then sew them to this linen. And I thought, why do that? First, I want to see the linen. Um, and secondly, I just don't want all that bulk. And it just seems redundant to sew 
everything on this page and then sew this page to this page. I think that's doing extra and because of the time constraints, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to stitch these right on the uh, linen napkin. And I know that stitching does draw these pages up a bit. So I'm thinking that if I have to, I can always put something on the edge, whether it's uh, underneath, whether tucking it in between the two pages of the signature, whether it's lace or a fabric. I can always tuck something and make it just a little bit larger. Um, this edge is raw, so I'll probably put some lace, I'm thinking, up on top here. But I'm going to attempt that to just stitch everything right on these linen pages. And then when these pages are done for the signature, I'll sew those pages together rather than um, stitch on one page, stitch it to the page, the signature, and so on. So that's kind of where I'm going with this, and I hope that that works out okay. I hope that it doesn't draw them up too much. Um, so I just thought I would show you quickly what I have shared to, um, to use in this journal, some of the things that I've chosen. Um, this fabric by Kath Holden is really beautiful and has so many images, um, so many beautiful images. And actually, these two were taken right out of this fabric, this one, and this was here. So these were taken out of that beautiful fabric. But um, this is probably nice, too. I would think I'll go back to this more during throughout the whole time because I'll probably be choosing other images. There is um, a Christmas Carol on here, which might be pretty a back, pretty background on a page, and these little birds, which are adorable. Um, I think those might be pretty on a page. Uh, there's a very pretty bird, image of a bird on here. Oh, this is also very pretty. Wish you a Merry Christmas. That's very pretty. And um, there's postage stamps. This I thought was very pretty as well. This image of a little bird in the snow. I thought this was just very pretty. That might look look nice on a page, but there's all sorts of motifs that could be used from this fabric. So that's one of the ones that I chose. That's called Christmas Fair by Kath Holden. And it is still available. I have seen it. So that's nice. And I chose uh, also these images that I may use. These are images printed on fabric and um, they have paper on the back right now because they've been printed but uh, you just take the paper off and they'll be pliable. But these are some of the images that I thought I might use. I'll just show you quickly. I love the vintage feel to many of these not knowing what our prompts will be. Maybe angels or sleighs. More little angels. I love this. I thought that's very pretty. I had thought of that for the first page also. Um, but I think the color's not quite right. But I on all of these, I would cut this white um, border off and just use the image. And there's more of these little images. Bunnies and bake shops. We bake lots of treats at Christmas time and going to see the Christmas trees in the square. Looks like a little camping picnic. Ice skating. 
I just thought these little animals were so cute. And they may fit on a page somewhere or may fit in with the prompts. Um, I think I'll be doing a combination of winter and Christmas. Um, I think I'll do maybe one page winter, one page Christmas, winter, Christmas, maybe. Um, that's kind of my plan, but again, it'll depend on the prompts. And here are some more little, am I? Yeah, I think I am. Can't see. <laughs> here are some more little images that are just so adorable. These are a little bit bigger. A little mouse skiing on some candy canes and ice skates. I used to ice skate every day, every single day in the winter when I was young. <laughs> I'm not young anymore, but I do love ice skating. Um, these I have. I thought these might be nice on a page. These are just stamped uh, little sayings. Let life surprise you. Um, the merriest Christmas. Little Christmas trees. Santa Claus post office. Uh, North Pole. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Merry Christmas. I, I just thought these might be very, very nice to put on a page somewhere. Again, I don't know what our prompts will be. Um, these were also some stamped images that I have that I thought might be nice on some of the pages postcard. We send cards at Christmas time, so maybe that would be nice. And um, I have some music. I have larger pieces of this, yardage of this, um, and I thought if I did do a little a bird or if I did do some little animals singing, little um, carolers, maybe I would put some music on the page. And I like, I like the color of this fabric with the ones that I've chosen so far. This looks like it could be Christmas to me. It's not Christmassy fabric, but it could be just because of the red and green. So I thought that was pretty. And I love red and white or red and ivory. So here are some red and ivory fabrics. This I absolutely love. Love, love, love. This makes me kind of think of a French fabric. I don't know. I just think it's so pretty. That might look pretty on a page. This looks like it might be poinsettias. And um, this one has letters to Santa that little children have written. So that might be pretty. And envelopes, which sending letters to Santa, I thought that might be nice. That would be appropriate. Um, and let's see. I have these fabrics that I pulled. These are by Kathy Schmitz. And they have kind of a vintage feel to them. This is Holly. Our daughter's name is, one of our daughter's names is Holly. And um, so I thought that might be pretty on there somewhere. And also this is the same fabric in another color way, so that might be pretty as well on there. And then this is words, um, like sledding through fields of snow, um, gently falling powdery snow, blanket of white over the fields, um, burr, winter white, different little um, sayings or, or thoughts about winter. So I thought that might be nice to include as well. Um, that one I showed. And this is a, a Jay Wecker Frisch fabric. I thought this was very pretty. I may coffee dye this, but I just 
think that's such a nice image that might be pretty on there on a page and um, here's an angel that might be pretty also maybe tea dyed or coffee dyed that might be pretty on there and um, and the wording on here, it tells about the uh, first, the birth of Jesus. An angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them. So I don't know, maybe some text or a little snippet of text on a page. But I thought this was very pretty fabric. This had some possibilities, depending on the prompts that were given. So I pulled that one as well. I probably pulled way more than I than I need, but I'll keep them all in a basket, and that way I can just go through and pick what might work, what might not. Um, this is a cute little fabric that I've used for project bags before um, with little chipmunks and squirrels. I love anything with nature. And kind of in keeping with that theme, these are very pretty. This has um, got moose and elk and deer. That might be pretty on part of a page, a portion of one, maybe an elk coming out from behind a tree. Uh, I thought that was very pretty. I loved this fabric with the little animals with sweaters. I forgot who, who designed this, but look at this little fox with a squirrel on his back, and these little animals have sweaters as well, so that might be cute, a cute little snippet to place on there. This fabric I love. It looks kind of like a, you know, just a wintry scene. Maybe it's snowing, and that looks like reindeer running through the hills or the the valleys so i thought that might be pretty um and then i chose let's see i chose this fabric because i'll probably i will probably do mostly red and green uh, that's generally how i decorate in the house we we really go all out for Christmas. Um, we put up at least three trees. And generally, it's a red and green theme, but um, one of our trees is white, and it does have a lot of pink um, Christmas ornaments on it. So I may throw a little pink in, although I didn't really pull any pink fabrics. But this is also by J. Wecker Frisch and um, Snowflakes makes you think of the snowflakes that you cut out when you were a child doing the little paper snowflakes for your windows or for little banners um, or maybe on gifts so I thought that was very pretty that might come in handy in either color depending on what I choose and um, staying with reds or well let's stay with blues this I love. This is by McKenna Ryan. And this is um, a very pretty birch trees scene. It looks like snow sparkling and um, very pretty colors like blues and greens. I had originally thought that this might look pretty on there. I don't know. Maybe that would look nice. But um, that, of course, makes me think of winter, too, and snow. And I pulled this holly, kind of a blue-green fabric. I thought that was pretty. That might even look nice on this page, a little bit of that on this page. Um, that's a pretty, and these are little holly leaves and holly berries on this. And then um, some other greens. These are pine branches with berries. Another green. Some more green that might, that deeper green might look nice with something. And this green with blue and blue and green on it. 
this is kind of a mix of blue and green and this green is a nice plaid I when I think of plaids I think of Christmas so that might be nice on a page and again here's another deep green and maybe a lighter green might look nice and some snowflakes might look pretty on a page this makes me think of snow this red fabric with the little dots looks like snow falling and maybe a little buffalo plaid would look pretty or another plaid this is like that green but um, that might look nice on a page and this was just a little piece of pink um, it ended up in here it's actually a doll's collar when I used to make dolls but um, a little bit of that might look pretty on a page too and these are some of the fabrics when I used to make dolls so maybe some of these would be used this one has little Christmas trees or a little check again we don't really know till we hear what the props are. My Valdani thread is unraveling here. <laughs> um, this is a fabric from my friend Jill in England that she sent to me, and um, I love this. I've used quite a bit of it. And uh, this has just pretty little Christmas images on it. Little girl hanging a stocking here. Um, Santa out in the forest with some little elves it looks like little children asleep in their bed and elves bringing gifts so I really love this fabric I treasure this I don't I don't want to use it all up this is a nice fabric this looks like branches maybe in the snow a deeper red uh, this is also branch fabric. That might be nice. There's looks like little chickadees on here, and it looks like it's snowing. If we put black on a page. And here are some snowmen, which are awfully cute. That might look nice on a page if we get a prompt for a snowman. This one's really adorable. That might look nice on a page, this little snowman. And um, that would be, of course, the wintry theme. And let's see what else. Here's some more Jay Wicker Frisch fabric that I just love her fabric. Um, such really adorable little images here. Little girl with a Christmas ball, a little angel on a rocking horse, a little girl with a star, sleigh riding. So those are awfully cute. And I know we're supposed to also do a tag. I don't know if it would be cheating <laughs> if, I, if I use this little image right here for a tag. Um, I actually thought of dyeing this sort of a with a with coffee and using that with um, the fabric on my my oops excuse me on my title page. I was thinking of just using this little tree on here but dyeing the background so it's more vintage looking. So I, I'm st I guess I still haven't completely decided, but um, that's a pretty, that could be the tag, and I'm not sure what we're supposed to do with that tag. We're, we're supposed to place it uh, more red and white, some barn, weathered barn board, weathered wood looking in red. This maybe could look like snow, another red. If we need it, uh, reds are so different. Look at the differences between more of a tomato red 
and uh, a deeper red, brownish red. So there's so many different colors of red. And um, I also pulled this fabric. I don't know, this may be large. This may be too large to use. Here's a snowman. And um, there's little scenes of a snowman here. So I don't know, that might be something to use. And this last fabric has horses and barns. I mean, maybe maybe that little scene right there might be pretty on a page. Let's see if I have it in frame. This might be pretty. I don't know. Or maybe the little trees could be used on there. I, I tend to approach this slow stitching from a quilter's point of view, and I don't quite have that style down yet where you, um, where it's just mostly borrow stitching and patches. I'm kind of collaging as, um, as I would in a quilt. So I'm trying to sort of morph into that style a little bit more, if possible. It may not be possible for me, though. <laughs> I don't know. I've been quilting for so long that it may be just ingrained. That's how my brain works. This was an, another adorable little um, image, image and writing that were stamped on uh, muslin. I thought that was awfully cute. And um, that is called Shut Eye Town. And there's quite a... I haven't even really read this. It might be part of a little story for a little child. Um, but I thought that might be nice on there. I just found this little tiny doily, which looks like it's about the right size for these pages. I just popped that in there. I haven't even really begun to pull any lace or anything. Um, so I imagine as we go along, that'll come. And this last fabric I was thinking I might use for a cover for my book. Um, I do have some other fabric. This I've had for quite a while, but I have some other fabric coming that hasn't come yet. It's coming from Canada, so I'm not sure when that'll get here. But I kind of thought that was a very pretty image. Um, of Santa flying over the houses. I thought that might be nice on the cover. And um, I could stitch other fabric around it to elongate it and make it fit the cover and then choose another image on here for the back. <clears throat> Excuse me, on, on the back of the book. I could choose another Santa. I think my book will be more Christmas um, Christmas themed, but also with winter, because winter happens, um, Christmas happens during winter season here in North America. Um, little children sleeping and Santa's bringing them gifts. So this isn't very pretty fabric for the book cover, I'm thinking, unless I find something else. So that is, um, that is my start to this Roxy's Journal of Stitchery, Volume 2, Christmas and Winter, which uh, they are favorite, favorite seasons of mine. I love winter. I love fall. Um, I love spring and summer as well, but I think my favorites are fall and winter. I, I also threw in a little bit of red Valdani thread just in case. <laughs> I'm sure we'll be using that. I have to pull some other threads. But basically, that's where, that is where I stand right now. Those are my ideas so far for my book and my pages. And um, again, to have to end up with 12 pages and not 13, or having to start a fourth signature, because my book is not really all that thick, I don't know what it entails to make a new spine. I'm guessing cardboard. A larger cardboard. I'm not sure how you'd adhere it 
and what kind of tape. But um, this is my start. It'll have the title. This will be prompt one page one, title page, all in one. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching today. And thank you to everyone else who shared their starts for their volume two. Uh, I think this is going to be really fun and exciting. I hope I can keep up because there's there's just so much to do in summer. And um, with moving my sewing room, it's involving moving a few rooms around three to be exact. And so it's proving to be very daunting. So I don't know. You can tell it's, what, the 20th and I'm just beginning. So I'll probably be a little bit behind, but that's okay. It's um, We have all winter to stitch to. Well, thank you again for watching, and um, I hope you all are enjoying your stitching. Bye for now.